Well, hello guys. So I haven't even gotten ready yet today. It's been such a, <laughs> a high for Jesus today. Um, just the fact that I had that amazing dream. I still can't get over it, guys. I felt, I felt what the rapture is going to feel like. But I wanted to encourage you because um, I had a really cool revelation today. So just because there's no messages from Jesus anymore doesn't mean that he doesn't still speak to me. He does. And he gave me a revelation about Abraham and how Abraham put his son on the altar. Well, that goes against God's word because God says, thou shalt not kill, right? Thou shalt not murder. But Abraham was willing to do that for God because of the obedience and faith. When Jesus gave me that revelation today, I was like, oh my goodness. So by me putting and, and us putting the date and the time out there and putting it on the altar against God's, you know, no man knows the day or other, which I still believe the spirit knows what the man doesn't understand. Because if you go past Matthew 24, but you are the children of light, you won't be surprised about these things. And it also says it in, I think it's in um, Daniel as well. I, there's a pastor that I follow, <clears throat> a, a very, not really a pastor, but he's, well, He I think maybe he has a pastor named Alan or something. But anyway, I really like his videos and he speaks truth, a lot of truths. And he has said something about the day and the hour and like, um, the spirit and, and, and it says it in Daniel, you know, about that showing the foreshadow of the rapture guys, the rapture is all over the Bible. If you look at it, I mean, it is everywhere. John four, two trumpet walks in the spirit. Jesus says, come up here. Revelation 12 gets caught up. The rest of them, uh, the woman goes into the wilderness, shows Israel, and the rest of them are the martyrs. It is everywhere if you ask Jesus and you just look and don't rely on your own understanding. But so he gave me that revelation. So literally that is what I did. I put it all on the altar for Jesus out of faith and obedience. There's nothing more that pleases Jesus more than childlike faith. And in my dream last night, it was like I was a child going around trying to wake up the kids and tell them almost like it's Christmas morning or something. Yeah, I can't explain it. But I was truly a child in heaven, like, but I was grown, but I just had that mentality of a child. Anyway, I want you to hear the, uh, the verse of the day on the Bible. It's so encouraging. For we, and this is uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe, 5 through 16 and then I, I jump to the next page as well yeah second corinthians 5 1 through 6 and then 8 through 21 and then second corinthians 6 1 through 18 <clears throat> for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down that is when we die and leave this earthly body we will have a house in heaven an eternal body made for us by god himself and not by human hands we grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. God knows we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. 
Are we commending ourselves to you again? No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. He speaks to me every day in a Bible verse, literally matches my life. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. Let me read that again. No longer counting people's sins against them, saved by childlike faith in his grace. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we would could be made right with God through Christ. I told you he doesn't see your sins when you're with Christ, but he changes you so it's not like you wanna go out and, and sin, but we fall short. But he loves us, and we were counted righteous under him. Next part, as God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. Also, I want to say, like before, you know, when I said it speaks to me, it does, but it's not just speaking to me. It's speaking to a lot of the people who are being persecuted by his own people right now or being judgmental. Or, you know, saying things they don't understand because they haven't actually asked Jesus for the confirmation. For God says at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us and no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we have give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. Oh, dear Corinthian friends, we have spoken honestly with you, and our hearts are open to you. There is no lack of love on our part, but you have withheld your love from us. I am asking you to respond as if you were my own children. Open your hearts to us. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you and I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That was the verse of day. 
It's so encouraging. Jesus loves you. Believe in him. It's your childlike faith and his grace. He'll save you. Ignore those scammers on YouTube. God bless.